Hello there, welcome back to the Chaps Guide. My name is Ash and I am your host on this journey through men's style, self-development and personal grooming. Now today I'm bringing you a fragrance review and it's one I've been very excited to bring to you because I have to admit, let's get some disclosure straight away. I've been a big fan of Drakkar Noir for a very long time. All right, this fragrance was introduced in 1982 by Guy La Roche, the design house, which is bringing us today's fragrance. And for me, Drakkar Noir embodies the 1980s. It is a brash powerhouse fragrance. It's a fougere. It is green and ferny. And I still wear this very much today. It's universally available. It's very modestly priced. If you don't own a bottle of Drakkar Noir and you're a gentleman, it's well worth considering because I love to wear it after I've undertaken sport because for me it's got a got a bouncy saucy uh, sporty type fragrance so great after some form of exercise or if you just want to smell very clean and powerful uh, it's a great one for raising the confidence I often wear Drakkar Noir when I feel like that but it comes from the house of Guy La Roche. They infrequently produce fragrances, it is fair to say. They started, I believe, doing fragrances in the 1960s, initially for females. And then the original fragrance called Drakkar was introduced in 1972, no longer, you know, in use or in production. Then Drakkar Noir followed uh, around about 10 years later, 1982 as I say, dominated the 1980s, but very little since. They have produced other fragrances. In fact, they make one called uh, Drakkar Essence, which is um, a recent introduction within the last sort of five, 10 years. And it is fair to say that this fragrance is a summery aquatic fragrance. It's really great for a bit of zest in the summertime, but not a mass pleaser. And in no way could you say that was related to Drakkar Noir uh, and Drakkar, because these are of course flankers of the original Drakkar. So, I was delighted to hear that Guy La Roche were bringing out a brand new fragrance in 2022, and it was to be called Drakkar Intense, which lets you think, well, if Drakkar Noir is this monster powerhouse, what is Drakkar Intense gonna smell like? And actually, it's described as an eau de parfum opposed to the original Drakkar Noir being an Eau de Toilette. Of course, those who are in the know will know that Eau de Parfum, much stronger, considered much more powerful than an Eau de Toilette. So, my hopes were very high. Now, I filmed this in March of 2022. It's quite difficult to get hold of this at the moment. You won't find it in shops. And I had to keep looking and looking and eventually purchase this uh, off eBay. It cost about £25, £24.95 to be exact. So not expensive. So we're not expecting, you know, a, an outstanding fragrance. It's a cheapie, let's be honest. I bought it as a blind buy. I had no idea what it would smell like, other than hoping it bore some resemblance to Drakkar Noir. So let's try it, shall we? Now, when we look at the fragrance, it is, I would suggest, a bright orange or a copper color. Uh, so we know that the juice inside is powerful because, you know, we get to see it. We can see it's a strong, rich uh, colour which suggests strength within the fragrance. So let us give it a little spray Oops, on the back of the hand. Get the old vaporizer working in the right direction. And I have to say, I applied this this morning. I've been wearing it for around about a week. Uh, so I know I've lived with the fragrance. It's not something I'm spraying for the first time today. And it definitely has some of that DNA from the original, not the original, it's not, you know, Drakkar Noir isn't the original. There was a, a previous one called Drakkar, but uh, definitely it's got some of the, some of the, the DNA, some of that essence uh, from its benefactor, Drakkar Noir. Okay, what can I tell you about this fragrance? Other than the fact, I have to say, it's definitely a fougere. Fougere meaning fern-like, uh, normally implying it is green. It is uh, a strong fragrance, for sure. But I will tell you what um, the, the fragrance accords are within this. So, we are looking at, in the head notes, now head note meaning this is what you'll get straight away 
which is what I'm getting on my skin right now. We expect wormwood, um, bergamot, rosemary, and coriander. So it's telling us bergamot, limey, sort of citrusy. Um, yeah, I get a bit of that. Um, wormwood is a sort of musky fragrance, that's true. Um, and the other coriander and uh, what did I say? Rosemary, herbal. There's definitely herbal essences here. Now in a little while, it will die down into its mid-note or the heart of the fragrance. And what we will expect to identify is lavender, clary sage and juniper. Again, somewhat herbal. Um, and yeah, it is. It, you do get a herbal a herbal hit from this fragrance and eventually after it's been on the skin for a little while it will dry down and we will get the base notes which we will expect to identify patchouli um, oak moss suede and lavender again lavender mentioned twice so there is an element of that within it for sure for me it is a musky fragrance there is definitely a musk to it which suggests masculinity um, what else can i tell you it is musky there's definitely a spice and you know that amberish color suggests warmth so there's a spiciness it is certainly herbal too so lots going on it combines together to give us quite a a barber shoppy fragrance quite herbal again i'm i'm referring back to this fougere this freshness this firmness there is a power there which is reminiscent of those 1980s accords which we know from dracar noir okay so let's talk about how we could make use of this fragrance in our collection is it worth buying it well um when would you wear it to start with? I would say this is a dense fragrance. As I say, it is musky. There is strength there. It will favor the time of year where you would, would lean towards those fragrances. So I'm going to say a winter and an autumn time because in the cold times of year, we tend to prefer stronger, more piercing fragrances. Um, an age range. Who would we expect would wear this in their life journey? For me, I would say people perhaps over 30. It has an element of maturity, which I think would favor people perhaps over 30. I am 52, happy to wear this. So I wouldn't say there's a topping out point. You know, you could wear this when you're 80. That said, if you're 21 and you like strong, powerful fragrances, which are, uh, as I've described them, you know, quite bouncy, quite, quite sporty, this might be something you could wear. Um, time of day that you would wear this. I'm, I'm torn a bit here. It is quite strong. Um, so, you know, would you wear it to the office? I think you could get away with wearing this to the office. It is not as brutal as Dracar Noir. It has less, even though it's called intense, I would say it is less intense than uh, Dracar Noir. So yes, you could wear it to the office. Equally though, you could wear it out in the evening if you're going into an environment where your fragrance will be competing with that of other people. So you want something with a bit of strength. So for sure, it has the strength to be a signature fragrance, a nighttime fragrance, but you know, worn in the daytime, you could wear it in the office too. Uh, occasions, would you wear it for a special occasion? For me, probably not. I don't think it is quite the monster, the brutal powerhouse that the original Dracar Noir was. So actually, I think intense is not something I would wear on my wedding day. But then again, if you really love this fragrance, if it, if it ticks that box for you, of course you could. You absolutely could. But for me, not quite special enough. Um, let me tell you what else I know. Masculinity, yes. This is a masculine fragrance. It's got muskiness, it's got strength, perfect for a man. As I say, quite sporty. This, this, this is something you could throw in your sports valise and after you've been to the gym and had a shower, throw this chap on and it's gonna work for you. Bit like Dracar Noir, really. It, fills this, it ticks the same box. Um, what about its projection and its longevity? I've been wearing this for over a week now. It projects okay for a couple of hours. It's not a monster, it's not a beast. It's not gonna hang around all day either. So I would say two hours or so is about what you get uh, of active projection and longevity. Silage, 
What I would say is I've applied, I work in a small home office. I apply this, sometimes I leave the room, I go into the kitchen, get a cup of tea or whatever, come back 10 minutes later. And when I walk back into a room, which I previously occupied, when I was wearing this, and you identify it straight away. So it definitely leaves a trace of itself. The silage is there. It's, you know, it's identifiable for sure, absolutely. Um, I have received third-party comments on this. My wife, uh, certainly, who shares a space with me, has said she likes it. Um, I haven't had general third-party comments. I've only been wearing it for a week, and people don't generally come up to you and say, hey, man, I just love that scent you've got on. You know, so I wouldn't expect them to, but those who are close to me have said they have enjoyed it. Let's have a look at its appearance. It is, as you can see, the twin brother of Drakkar Noir. They have not spent any money on the design team here. They've produced something which is identical, just in a slightly different take on the bottle. Whereas Drakkar Noir is a blacked out bottle, you can't see the juice. This one has got a clear bottle, allowing you to identify and see that amber orangey color in there, which suggests its strength, as I say. Um, all the other design elements are taken from Drakkar Noir. A uh, 100 milliliter bottle, as I say, cost me 24.95, so a modest price. Uh, the box, the package it comes in, if you're interested, uh, again, it is a, an absolute clone of Drakkar Noir's box, but instead of having red accents, as Drakkar Noir always has in its advertising material, this one has, I would say, a deep, rich orange or a copper color. So just delineating between the two big players now in the Guy La Roche men's section, just by the color red and the color uh, copper orange, just to tell you where you are and uh, what it's all about. So, what are my overall thoughts of this little fragrance, Drakkar Intense? Well, as I say, it's had a big act to follow. Drakkar Noir is an iconic monster of the man's fragrance world. So to bring out another fragrance uh, of a similar nature, similar, uh, you know, ideology, iconography even, they look very, very similar, they have to be on their own game because they bring out something which doesn't perform and it, they're going to be looking fools. I think they've brought out something which is a worthy, not a successor, it's not better than Drakkar Noir in my opinion. I would not forego my Drakkar Noir and wear this instead. I think they occupy very similar places in the fragrance world but um, there's definitely a difference between them both. So if you own Drakkar Noir you might need to think carefully is it worth me buying Intense? Because it's a slightly different variation of it, I would suggest. But if you're new to Guy La Roche and their stable of fragrances, this might be an interesting point to start. It's very inexpensive and it's brand new. So you're getting into something which is new out there in the world. As I say, it is musky. It is slightly herbal. It's got a barbershop elegance to it. Uh, it's quite clean smelling. It's quite sporty smelling. It's got everything really that a young gentleman or a chap in the world today may wish to smell of. So worth giving it a try in my opinion. I like it. I've been wearing it for a while. I'm going to continue wearing it too. So there we go. I hope you've enjoyed this review of Drakkar Intense. If you have, I would encourage you to give us a thumbs up. If you're not a subscriber already, click that red button, join us on the journey. And if you'd like to practically support the channel, you can buy me a coffee. There's a link to the buy me a coffee page in the show notes below. So until the next time, continue to smell great, look after yourselves, and I will see you again very soon.